We're going to be recapping all the biggest headlines from day four of Miami Dolphins training camp. This first story, Leontay Crew looks like a totally different player. This story comes from the Palm Beach Post. Make no mistake, the crew who took the field as a rookie looked nothing like the crew who stood out in the fourth Miami Dolphins training camp practice. Crew made two outstanding plays. First, he battled underneath on a hard-fought win over Michael Thomas on a pass from Matt Moore. Later, Crew caught a deep bomb from Moore against Walt Aikens down the left sideline for an apparent touchdown, though ref said he was just shy of the goal line. Crew only had three catches for 29 yards last season, but Adam Gase is encouraged. Gase said that Crew has done a better job breaking off the line of scrimmage more quickly and that his conditioning has improved. Gase said Crew no longer labors at the end of hot practices. Crew said he's trying to feed off, quote, the big three of Jarvis Landry, Javante Parker, and Kenny Stills. He said, quote, so that I can make my way into their little group. As discouraging as his rookie season was, Sunday was encouraging for Carew. He's just a totally different player. Uh, last year, he was playing overweight. Obviously, we traded up to get him with the Minnesota Vikings, giving up a third-round pick to get him, and he was just an absolute disappointment throughout the regular season. He has he had a lot of promise coming out of Rutgers. He was a touchdown machine in college, um, back-to-back 10-plus touchdown uh, seasons. He was just an extremely productive player. He just never lived up to it, and he never he's never lived up um, to the price of giving up a third round pick to get him. So this is great news for Dolphins fans. Um, he's continuing to build. He's lost a ton of weight. I think he's down to like 200 pounds. He looks like a totally different player. So this is great news for Dolphins fans. This report is detailing the red zone drills from day four of Dolphins training camp. This report comes from Armando Salguero of the Miami Herald. It's third and goal from the 11 yard line. And because he was once a touchdown machine in Adam Gase's Denver's offense, Julius Thomas seems like a likely target for Ryan Tannehill. All goes to Jarvis Landry who rewards Tannehill's throw with a touchdown. Fast forward to a second and goal situation from the five and this time Thomas is blocking as a quick pass goes to Devontae Parker for a touchdown. Later it's first and goal from the eight and Thomas isn't even on the field as Sandhill throws a touchdown to Kenny Stills and later it's Landry catching another red zone touchdown as Thomas blocks. So this is great news for Dolphins fans. The offense some had a bounce back. Uh, I wouldn't say a bounce back day because they had a pretty good day on day three, but day four, um, obviously that production in the red zone is pretty nice, um, especially since most of those touchdowns came off of um, screens, and that's something we struggled with last year. Screens were terrible. We could not execute a, uh, uh, any kind of screen last year, uh, and screens, if you watch the 2013 uh, Denver Broncos offense where they broke all kinds of records, screens was like a hu- screens were a huge part of that offense. Demarius Thomas... Um, uh, was a beast, and Devontae Parker is very similar in the way that he's a great run after the catch receiver, and obviously we know Juice is a great run after the catch receiver, so it's nice to see the Dolphins executing them in practice. This next report, the Miami Dolphins do have depth at the nickel cornerback position. Starter Bobby McCain was injured during the one-on-one portion of practice today, and thankfully it doesn't seem to be a serious injury, but the injury gave others on the roster an opportunity to showcase their position flexibility, which will def- definitely be needed during the regular season. Veteran defensive backs Michael Thomas and Alteron Werner stepped in the nickel position for the remainder of the practice and showed quickness and inside coverage skills. Both players will be asked to play multiple roles during the preseason, and that flexibility is usually needed in the back end of the defense. Another example is safety Walt Aikens getting more reps at corner than in previous years. All three should also play significant roles on special teams while adding positional depth. So this is great news. I think the Dolphins have done a tremendous job of gathering depth in all on every position on the defensive side, which was a huge problem. Uh, we were really top-heavy on our roster these last five seasons, um, and our depth was a big issue, and we've done a great job of uh, correcting that this upcoming season because we dealt with a lot of injuries last year, and most of the backups last year stepped up and played well enough for us to get in the playoffs. Our team was so injured, so injured last year, and it is a miracle that we even made it to the playoffs, so adding more depth is only going to make the Dolphins better. This next report, Julius Thomas has had a slow start to training camp. This report comes from the Palm Beach Post. New tight end Julius Thomas hasn't had many catches so far, but Adam Gase doesn't consider it a slow start. He says the ball is simply going elsewhere and expects Thomas to show how much of a threat he can be in preseason games. Again, it's we're only four practices in, so there you can't make a, a big criticism of anything. Um, and uh, I think Julius Thomas, again, I think he was a great signing. I think he, uh, if he can stay 100% healthy and he doesn't get hurt, um, it's going to be the best tight end. Tannehill has ever played with and he's going to dramatically improve 
uh, our red zone numbers. Despite the slow start, I still expect uh, Julius Thomas to, to be a beast of a tight end this upcoming season and again to dramatically improve our red zone numbers um, and give Tannehill the best tight end he's had since Charles Clay and by far the best tight end in my opinion he has ever had um, in his NFL career. Not to mention in, in an Adam Gase offense he had back-to-back -back 12 touchdown uh, seasons and tight end is extremely important to Adam Gase's offense um, and I would expect him to have a Pro Bowl caliber season despite the slow start. This next report is concerning defensive end William Hayes. This report comes from the Palm Beach Post. Defensive lineman William Hayes got a day off today, but has no injury. Gase wants to get the veteran defensive linemen some breaks during training camp and trying to spread them out so the entire group isn't off on the same day. So obviously nothing serious here. William Hayes has been a one of the best, if not the best, especially last year, one of the best rotational defensive ends um, in the NFL for a long time now. He's seriously, I think he's going to dramatically improve our run defense, and that's something the Dolphins defense has struggled with over the last five years since we've been a bad run defense, is our rotational players have been god-awful. Last year it was Jason Jones, um, to name a few. I mean, I can't even, I mean, Demontre Moore was one of them at one point. Uh, Mario Williams, he was a terrible rotational defensive end. Um, so, William Hayes is going to dramatically improve our run defense. He is a hard-nosed defensive end, and he can play a little bit of de defensive tackle since he comes through from a 3-4 system. I expect him to do big things for the Dolphins this upcoming season. This next report, Bobby McCain's injury scare. Uh, this report comes from the Palm Beach Post. The Dolphins had their biggest injury scare of training camp when slot cornerback Bobby McCain went down with a knee injury this morning. He missed the rest of practice, but seems to be fine and shouldn't miss much time. Adam McGay said, quote, he's fine. McCain was in coverage when he went down with a non-contact injury, and the training staff spent extensive time checking out his right knee. He did some light running and cutting off to the side to test it out. This is great news for Dolphins fans. If Bobby McCain went down, we really wouldn't have anything else to rely on. Michael Thomas is one of our best special teams players, so his, his time is dedicated to that. Uh, Corjair Tankersley is a prospect player, um, and Altron Werner just got here. So if Bobby McCain went down, then we really would be stuck with basically nothing. Nobody knows the defense as well as Bobby McCain does. We're going to do a quick rundown of all the highlights from day four of Miami Dolphins training camp. This report comes from the Palm Beach Post. Anthony Vassano caught a deep pass from Ryan Tanhill. Sam Young saw action at right tackle as he would seem to be the third swing tackle. Leontay Crew had a nice hard-fought catch over the middle from Matt Moore. Walt Aikens was called for a, for a pass interference after what appeared to be a breakup. Francis Owusu dropped an open pass in the middle of the field. Later, Owusu caught a pass after a brief bobble. Moore overthrew Jarvis Landry on a bomb defended by Byron Maxwell. Bobby McCain walked off the field after a scary moment where he was down after getting tangled up with a receiver. Later, McCain was seen jogging. Carew had a nice long catch against Walt Aikens down the left sideline for an apparent touchdown, though ref said he was just shy of the goal line. Malcolm Lewis had an outstanding adjustment in the air to beat Lafayette Pitts on a, in a one-on-one -on -one drill. Carew fumbled after a nice catch later in the practice and was unable to haul in a long one for Matt Moore. Jakeem Grant has a nice catch over the middle from Matt Moore. Ryan Tannehill barely overthrew Devontae Parker on a deep bomb. Davion Smith and Brandon Watts got into a shoving match at the end of a play. And also, uh, Golden State Warriors power forward Draymond Green visited uh, Miami Dolphins practice. So those are all the highlights from day four of Miami Dolphins training camp. This, that has been your day four recap of Miami Dolphins training camp. A lot of great news um, coming out of tra training camp, it's really good to hear the offense continues to look really, really, really good, um, and that's great news. Uh, so let me know what you guys think of all these stories. What concerns you the most? What are you most happy about? And I am Skags1383, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's get through the rigmarole before we jump into the podcast. Remember, guys, this podcast posts each and every single Wednesday. The first segment of the show, we go through all the Dolphins news you need to know about. The second segment of the show... We go through all the AFC East news you need to know about in the third and final segment. We go through the Miami Dolphins fan Q&A.